Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. You are my beloved child. You are God's beloved child. Not you might be. Not um, at some point in the future you're going to be. You are. You are God's child. And you are beloved. You are loved by God. You are loved. You are cherished. You are, um, you are accepted. And with you, God is well pleased. Notice, notice that, that that proclamation comes to Jesus before he's proclaimed, he made any miracles, before he's preached any sermons, before he's uh, taught any parables, before he has done any of his ministry that we have in the Gospels. Except, of course, when he's 12 years old and, and gets lost. But Jesus has done nothing to make God pleased with him. God is simply pleased to call you and me God's children. Years ago, I was serving at uh, St. Matthew Lutheran Church in uh, uh, Dubuque, Iowa. And uh, Anna was about two and a half or three years old when I started there. Not quite three, two and seven, three quarters, two thirds. You know, when you're that young, you kind of, you know, measure every part. When you get to be our age, it's like, yeah, I want to forget. I'm only 57. Up until the 2nd of February, I'm going to be claiming I'm only 57. On the 3rd, I'll have to say 58, but that's okay. So I was up uh, preaching my sermon uh, in, in the pulpit at, at uh, St. Matthew, and all of a sudden I, I felt this presence, this presence with me in the pulpit. And I looked down... And there was Anna. I was in the middle of my sermon, and she had decided, this you know, little two, two and a half year old, decided that she wanted to see what in the world Daddy was doing up there. And so she came up, and somehow she got around because she, because she had to go up the up into the altar area by through a door, through another door, and then up into the pulpit. And so I'm standing there, and all of a sudden I look down, and she's there. And she looks up at me and she says, Baba. That's the Chinese word for daddy. And then she does one of these. And she looks, at, this is the pulpit, okay? She gets up on her tiptoes and she looks out at everybody. And then I said, now, Annie, you need to go back and sit down with Mama again. So she did. She went back. She was really, really good about it. But you know, that name, Baba, it brings a smile and it brings tears to my eyes because that is the most awesome name that anybody has ever called me in my life. It's, it's, just, it's just awesome. And I am well pleased with my daughter. I am so glad she is my daughter. Matter of fact, I, you know, I may have mentioned this before, but I've given her a nickname recently. I call her Awesome Daughter. That's, that's my nickname for her because I am so pleased that she is my daughter. Even, even when she does things that I don't particularly like, even when she's naughty, which I have to tell you is almost never. I just, seriously, seriously, almost never does she um, do anything to, to vex me. Although she is only 13, she's, you know, she's getting to that age. But I am pleased with her as my daughter. I wouldn't want any other 
child in this world to be my daughter. I've got the best daughter in the world. You see, that's the way God looks at us. God looks at us and is pleased that we are God's children. It's not about what we do. It's not about uh, whether we uh, earning God's favor or anything like that. God is pleased with, with who we are, exactly who we are, right here, right now. No conditions. And that happened on that day when we were baptized. When we came to the waters of baptism, for Jesus it was in the Jordan River, for Bo and Sarah, it was uh, in Clear Lake. For me, it was in a little church in Rush City, Minnesota. And for you, one day, they put the waters on you. They put the water of God on you and said, you are God's child. You belong to God. And see, that's a big deal. Belonging is a huge deal. You are my child, says God. You are my child. My beloved, with you I am well pleased. A few years ago, uh, there was a psychologist, uh, a psychiatrist, you know, professor, researcher, who, who described the importance of belonging. He described what, what are the things that motivate us as people. And if you can, you can see, hopefully you can see this, it could be a little bit bigger, but down on the bottom, the, the physiological needs. We need food, water, shelter, right? Those are the things, if, if we have nothing else, the first things we're going to make sure we have is food, water, and shelter. Those things that protect our body. Nothing else matters if, if you're hungry. Nothing else matters if you are dying of thirst. Nothing else matters if you are out in a blizzard and, and you, are, you are starting to go through hypothermia. Those are the absolute fundamental needs that motivate us. We will do whatever we can to fulfill those needs. But once those needs are met, then we have needs of safety, safety and security. That's why we build walls around uh, ourselves. That's why we build fences and things like that. That's why we put in home security systems, because we want to be safe. But then, then comes our need to belong. And, and people will do some pretty strange things sometimes to belong. We, we want to know that we have connection with others, that we have some kind of, of uh, support system, some, uh, that, that we've got people that have our back. Yeah. And so we as human beings, we work hard to achieve belonging because we identify ourselves with, with the group to which we belong. Because in many ways, that provides safety and security for us. So what are some things that we do for belonging? Um, we join organizations. We uh, become part of uh, a, a movement um, where we can identify ourselves with with groups of others because we have this fundamental need to belong to something bigger than ourselves. That's why we identify ourselves with, with things like um, 
Uh, professional football teams. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we, and, and we, love to, we love to poke at each other because, it, you know, it's kind of, it, it's tribalism is what it is. Tribalism. It's us against them. You know, back when, back when we were in the middle of the Cold War, it was really easy because all Americans could gather together and we could all be against those dirty, rotten commies, right? It was easy for us. We could all be together because we had a single enemy. And so we belonged. We identified ourselves. Oh. Today, we divide ourselves into groups and, and we define ourselves as us and them. We do it in, in, in politics. We do it in, um, uh, in our, our national origin. We do it in smaller ways as well. Um, we do it with denominations. We even do it with churches. That we, I belong to this church or that church or the other church. And it becomes an exclusive activity. Because we, we feel safer when we belong. We feel safer when we can identify ourselves with a group of people that we know has our back. The waters of baptism. God gives us an identity. God gives us a sense of belonging. God calls each and every one of us. You are my child. You are my child. So the other night we were out for supper with the Galilean guys and I'm a Vikings fan and I had to sit next to Dan Kapinski with his Packers hat on. Go Pack Go, yes. But you know, that didn't matter because we're brothers in Christ. That is the most important identity that we have because we've both been baptized in this water and we have both been claimed by God as God's child and God is pleased with both of us. Hmm. You are my child. You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And there are different ways that we, that we identify um, whether or not we belong. One of those ways is when we come to worship on Sunday morning, is the pastor wearing his robe or not? <laughs> I did that on purpose this morning in case you're wondering. You know, for those of us who, that is our tradition, that is our understanding of church, when we walk in and we see the pastor in, in his or her robes and they're wearing the right colored stole, it, we sit back and we just, it makes us feel like we're in a place that we belong. Yeah. If, if you're... Uh, 16 years old and you walk into a room and everybody there is 60 years old and over, you feel scared because you don't belong. And if you're an old person and you walk into a room with a bunch of kids, you really feel scared because you know you don't belong. The day I went to uh, uh, an African Methodist Episcopal church and I was the only person of this skin color in the whole room. And of course, the fun thing about that is if you walk in and they find out you're a pastor, you don't sit in the back. I was hoping I could sit in the back and become, be inconspicuous. Yeah, right. <laughs> inconspicuous. Um, no, if you're a pastor, they bring up an extra chair and they sit you up front. Yeah, but you know what? I didn't feel like I didn't belong because they were my brothers and sisters in Christ and we were worshiping God and I enjoyed it. I was a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit scared, 
especially when the pastor, after he got done with his sermon, looked at me and says, Pastors, Pastor McCluskey, would you like to share a word with us today? <laughs> no way, not me. But I belonged there because I was their brother in Christ, because for everybody in that room, God said those same words, you are my child, my beloved, with you I am well pleased, to all of us. Yeah. The problem is the world tells us we don't belong. The world tells us we are not accepted. The world tells us we have to do something or be something or look a certain way in order to be accepted. Belonging. Do you, do you, do you believe me that belonging is important? That being accepted and being, if you don't, the fashion and beauty industry makes over $16 billion a year because we want to look like others, we want to dress like others, we want to be accepted, and we're afraid that we won't be accepted if we don't if we're not beautiful. Of course, that's the biggest lie of all. Putting on a mask does not make you beautiful. Hmm. There's, a, there's an author named Brene Brown, and I've read some of her things, and, and it's, her work is, is groundbreaking and, and it's, it's amazing in its simplicity and truth. And I want to share a quote from her for you. She says, stop walking through the world looking for com confirmation that you don't belong. Right? I mean, don't... I do that sometimes. I'm afraid of being myself because I'm afraid that others won't like who I am and won't like the way I dress, won't like what I look like, and so therefore I look around and I look for, um, I look for confirmation that others are judging me and that I am not accepted. She says, you will always find evidence of that. You will always find confirmation that you don't belong because you have made that your mission. If you're looking for, if you're looking for people who, who, um, who judge you or look down at you, you will find them. <laughs> Una Voce's concert the other, the other, a month ago, uh, there was a person who was, you know, one of, the, one of the choir members. There was this lady, and she was sitting in the front row, and she just, she looked like that, the whole thing. I think she was miserable. And they said, no, that's just the way she looks. <laughs> that's her resting face. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's her RBF. Anyway, um, she just looks, but she loved it. She loved the concert, but she sat there the whole time just, you know, so, you know, we look because it's our mission to look around and find evidence that we are not accepted. Stop, she continues, stop scouring people's faces for evidence that you're not enough. You will always find it because you've made that your goal. True belonging and self-worth are not goods. We don't negotiate their value with the world. The truth about who we are lives in our hearts. Our call to courage is to protect our wild heart against constant evaluation, especially our own. No one belongs here more than you. Because you are God's child. God has claimed you in the waters. God
God has called you beloved, and God has proclaimed with you, I am well pleased. Amen.